If you're someone who loves setting goals, who has a lot of big ideas, who is great at making plans, and you're even really good at getting started on them and getting going and you're excited and full of enthusiasm and you make progress, but then soon after you start, you just begin to fade out. You start to lose that sparkle and that excitement and that motivation. And then eventually it just fades right out and you end up quitting. Then you're going to get a lot out of this video. If you're someone who has done this several times throughout their lives and because of that feel really frustrated with yourself, feel discouraged in yourself and think that you are not able to follow through and you don't like this, you don't like this habit, you don't like this behavior, then you're going to get a lot out of this video. If because you have a habit of not following through on things, you don't think that you can trust yourself and it's impacting your self-esteem and just your overall relationship with yourself, then you're going to get a lot out of this video. We're going to talk today about why we quit things and how to keep going even when we feel like giving up, even when, you know, the novelty wears off and our brain starts to fade, how to keep going on the things that are most important to us so that we can get the results that we want for, you know, the reason why we started in the first place is because the reason why you start something is because you want some kind of result at some point. And so being able to see it through until that happens, because that feels good <laughs> to have a plan to follow through on the plan to get the result of that follow through feels good. So we're going to talk about all of that today. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you're back, say hello. Always good to connect with you. Always good to see you all connecting with each other. Um, if you haven't already, if you could hit the subscribe button, it is about right down there. And Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my incredible membership community, The Shift Society, with incredible people in there doing this work at a deeper, deeper level and being supported all along the way. You can get more information about that in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And the truth is starting and stopping and making commitments and then breaking those commitments to ourselves is holding us back. And it's not doing any favors for our relationship with ourselves or our self-esteem. Because if you think about it, it's pretty much the same thing as a relationship with any other human being. That if they were constantly committing to something and making promises to us and saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, you know, make this happen. And then they ended up just sort of quitting, walking away, giving up on it, we would start to lose trust in them. We would be like, you don't do what you say you're going to do. You don't follow through. So how can I believe you? How can I trust you? And that's the same with ourselves. When we are continuously making promises to ourselves or making commitments and starting off and stopping and quitting, walking away, then it breaks trust. We stop being able to trust ourselves to be able to follow through. Now, as a caveat, there is a difference between starting something and then realizing it's not what you were expecting it to be. And then you're just like, you know, actually, I don't want to do this. It's not for me. It's the wrong, it's the wrong fit. And you're like choosing, intentionally choosing to go in a different direction to just sort of like put it away altogether. That's different than starting something and then letting your brain talk you out of it by being like, oh, this is going to be too hard. It's going to take too long. You don't have what it takes. You're not good enough. You know, you can't handle it. Right. When your brain starts to talk you out of something, that's different than stopping because of preference and learning how to know the difference between your brain, you know, working against you and your brain working for you. We also need to know is one of the biggest reasons why people give up is because they rely solely on motivation and enthusiasm to keep them going. And it's just normal whenever we're, we're investing in something, whenever we are taking on a longer term project, when we have a bigger goal or working towards it, we love the idea of the outcome. We get excited about the outcome, but then 
part way through, we realize actually it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some work. I'm going to have to keep showing up for this. I'm going to have to actually do something to make this happen. And then we're like, oh, I'm not so excited anymore. And then we end up just letting that lack of enthusiasm from the work that's required talk us out of it. And then we're like, well, you know what? I'm not going to bother, right? It's going to be too hard. It's going to take too long. I don't have what it takes. It's going to be too tough to maintain. Like all of these excuses that our brains come up with. And so we never end up getting to the things that actually are important to us. And so we have to have something more than just excitement and motivation because the truth is any kind of goal, any kind of thing that we're working towards in our lives, it's not always easy. It's not always fun. We're not always going to be excited about it. If it's about, you know, if you're building your career and you're like, I want to get this promotion and I want to like work towards this, it's not going to happen overnight. And there's going to be things that kind of suck about it that are going to be hard about it. But if that's something that's important to you, being able to rely more on just on excitement and motivation to carry you through. Or if it's about wanting to go back to school because you're like, I want to go back to school. I want a career change or I want to get more skills so that I can, you know, work up in whatever career path I'm working in. And you love the idea of going back to school, but then you actually realize that going back to school means homework. It means assignments. It means reading. It means papers. It means lectures. And you're like, oh, well, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm good enough for this. Or if it's about finding a new relationship and you're like, I really want to have like a really healthy, strong, connected partnership with someone and then realize that you have to go on dates and you have to go on a lot of dates. You have to might need to meet a lot of people and weed through a lot of duds before you get to someone who is the right connection for you. And you're like, oh, I'm going to have to put myself out there. I'm going to have to meet a lot of people. I might have to also endure some disappointment if I'm into someone and they're not into me then just having the excitement and the motivation at the beginning isn't going to pull you through. If it's about working on yourself, if it's about doing your own healing and growth work to be able to manage your mind and and emotions, to be able to feel better, to be able to live better, to be able to love better. We love the idea of feeling good, but then kind of start to get a little bit, you know, scared off when we realize it's actually going to take some effort on my part, that it's not just going to happen, that our desire for a result is not enough to get to the result. And so knowing that right off the bat, I hope that that helps some of you when you start something and if you have a habit of quitting things because it gets hard. Yeah, getting hard is part of it. Getting uncomfortable is part of it. It wouldn't wouldn't be really worth it, right? Like anything that's worth something is going to require some effort. If it was easy, everyone would do it. (laughs) But knowing that usually the things that are most worth it take consistency, they take effort, they take, you know, intentionally showing up, they take continuing to do it. And even when it gets tough, even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, and this is why, big reason why I created the Shift Society is for doing this internal work to have full support along the way because there are times when it gets hard, right? There are times where we hit a wall and we're like, I feel like giving up, right? Maybe I just go back to the way the things were before. At least when I was feeling miserable, I knew what to expect, you know? Maybe I just go back to like feeling miserable and struggling, but at least I know how to exist in that way and we'll let our brains talk us out of it instead of being like, no, I want better. I want to feel better. I want to live better. I want to love better. And I deserve that from me. So I'm going to do the work, but also knowing that I need a community of support along the way because there are things that come up. There are challenges that we face, which if you are a shifter and you are here watching this right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you are a shifter, just let us know in the comment section below, you know, how that's been to be able to have that support around you as you've been on this journey of taking this work deeper and doing this healing and growth work at a deeper level. So the first thing that's going to help you not give up is knowing that it's supposed to get hard. That in and of itself is enough for a lot of us. It's been a lot for me to just realize there's times in my life where I'm like, oh, this is so hard. Why is this so hard? And then hearing from other people that are having the same struggles and being like, oh, it's supposed to be hard. Everyone finds this hard. There's not something wrong with me that I'm finding it hard. This is just part of it. Just knowing that and accepting that actually, ironically, makes it easier. The next thing that you can do 
when you are someone um, who does quit or give up a lot is to come up with better reasons, right? Come up with bigger reasons for wanting the goal. Why do you want this? What's going to happen when you have this? What's the point of it? And so liking those reasons, and it's not just, just as a little bit of a, a backup here, I want to make sure that you know that, you know, the point of a goal isn't always just to reach the goal. It's actually less to do with actually with reaching the goal as it has to do with what we need to experience along the way. That the point of a goal is to have some kind of direction that we're going to be able to learn, to grow, to expand, to experience. That is what human beings are designed for. We do well when we are in movement. It doesn't mean that we are racing all the time. We do take time to sit and to rest, but if we can get in sort of a good sort of forward movement with times of rest throughout it, that's how human beings do well. But we do need reasons. We need reasons to want to move forward. We need reasons for wanting to work towards that goal. So if you are giving up or quitting prematurely, it's probably because you don't like your reasons enough. And you can even write those reasons down so they're in front of you. So whenever your brain is trying to talk you out of it, be like, oh yeah, this is why you're doing this. This is what you want. This is what you deserve to um, experience or have in your life. And that's gonna help you refocus and keep moving forward. Something else that is stopping you from being able to follow through on the things that are most important to you is you relying on your feelings to carry you through. How often do you say to yourself, oh, I just don't feel like doing this right now, so I'll just do it later, I'll do it tomorrow, or you know, whatever that is. I just don't feel like it. I'll just wait till I feel better, wait till I'm ready. And I wanna ask you, how well is that going for you? <laughs> relying solely on your feelings and knowing that that's not a good strategy because our human brains are always trying to move us towards pleasure or away from pain. And so if your brain sort of interprets any effort that you need to make towards your goal, towards continuing to show up as uncomfortable, then it's going to try to talk you out of it. It's going to try to make some kind of excuse to get you to not do it. And so you can't always just rely on your feelings. You can't always just do what you feel like doing because your feelings will often lie to you. So what do you do instead? Instead of saying, oh, what do I feel like doing right now? Instead, ask yourself this question. What is in my best interest? It is a lot harder to trick yourself <laughs> and to talk yourself out of it when you actually ask yourself that honest question. What is in my best interest? And it almost forces you to give yourself an honest response to that. Relying on that instead of your feelings is going to help you continue to keep showing up and moving forward towards the things that are most important to you. The next thing that's going to help when you are someone who gives up a lot is to get curious. Often, like we've talked about, we give up on things but because we have something that we're afraid of, right? We're afraid that it's going to be too hard. We're afraid that we're not going to be able to follow through. We're afraid that we're not good enough, that we don't have what it takes. We're afraid, even sometimes, of getting the result that we've, we've always wanted and actually, you know, feeling good and being proud. We're afraid of feeling good because we maybe don't know what that feels like. Maybe somewhere deep down, there is this belief that you don't deserve to have the outcome. You don't deserve to feel good, to feel happy, to have the healthy, solid relationship, to get the promotion and have the responsibilities and the title. Maybe you think you don't deserve to have a body that is energetic and healthy. You don't deserve good things in your life, maybe there is at a deeper level this identity piece that I don't know who I am or who I would be with these things because I've spent so long in my life not having them and believing that I'm not good enough for them. 
that people like me don't get to have stuff like that, don't get to feel good, don't get to have a good life, don't get to have a good relationship, don't get to feel good in their body, don't get to have a great job, don't get to have success because there is this sort of deeper sort of um, um, dissonance, disconnect to your identity, you, your beliefs about who you are, and then having these things in your life, there's a disconnect there, and that's causing this discord and um, this resistance to it. So getting curious about that. Whenever there is resistance, there is a reason. So looking a little bit deeper, knowing that all human behavior is purposeful. When we're doing something, it's for a reason. When we stop, doing something it's for a reason it might not be a reason that is a you know good reason that is you know for our the goodness of us for our benefit <laughs> but in our brain somewhere it has a logical explanation for why it is doing what it's doing or stopping us from doing what we want to be doing this is the deeper work that we do in the shift society where we uncover these things and get really good and clear on what is holding us back and then doing the work to sort it out if you want to join us with that in the shift society then you can get on the um on the wait list the link is in the description below and in the meantime while you're waiting for registration to open get started on building your self-trust this is going to be a key part of learning how to listen to yourself how to follow through with things how to finish what you start to complete the things that are important to you. It's interesting because when we stop those things, it breaks our trust with ourselves. But when we have trust within ourselves, when we trust ourselves, we are more likely to follow through. And then that follow through also helps to build that trust. So I've got the key set steps to self-trust um, that you can get. It's in the description below. Start working on that right away. If you liked the video, got something out of it, would love it if you could hit the like bucket, <laughs> hit the like button, <laughs> subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Feel free to share this with anyone that you think that would get something out of it who has been getting really discouraged with the starting and stopping. Um, and then, yeah, let me know what connected with you. Get on the wait list for the Shift Society. Grab the simple steps to self-trust. And until next time, take good care.